<clears throat> yeah, I did see um, that guy um, receiving anal pleasure in the Senate chamber. I got asked on Saturday in the Discord. They were like, the streets want to know, NL, do you think that it is um, cringe, based, or mid that there was a sex tape filmed in the Senate chamber? And I said, let me ponder that for 30 seconds because I don't want to... Um, I don't want to make a mistake with this one. I want to make sure that I'm actually thinking about it. And then I said, I think it's based. Caveat, the exception is if they're actively working um, to pass homophobic legislation, in which case it becomes cringe because we don't stand hypocrites. But otherwise, if that caveat does not apply, then I would say it's based. Should they have done it? Probably not. Should they have filmed it? Absolutely not. But is it based? Yeah. I had to look up Mystic River. I'm praying for you. Bro, Tim Robbins, Kevin Bacon. It was nominated for Best Picture in 2003. Like, let's not go crazy here. I'm embarrassed because I can't think of the other, like, five actors who make up the ensemble. It's Tim Robbins. It's Kevin Bacon. Who were the other? Sean Penn, right? Of course, Sean Penn. Fun fact, the director of The Black Phone is a Twitch viewer. He could be here right now. If you're here, give me a plus 10. Is it true, by the way, that if you're like in middle school... <laughs> this is funny. Okay, don't be a menace to South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. Um, how about... You know, I'm not afraid. I'll, I'll go to... I'm going to get you, sucker. I'll meet you there. Is it true that if you're in middle school or high school, kids these days say chat, is that true? And they, after like half the things they say, they say chat at the end? Because if so, that's so funny. Our influence on the world as Twitch streamers is finally paying dividends. <laughs> My six-year-old cousin is obsessed with Mr. Beast. He narrates his whole life like a let's play. That's hilarious. My impression of a 19-year-old, that's so messed up. My impression of somebody that has a three-year-old, that's hilarious. Little bro's six. He's going to grow out of it. I wouldn't worry about it too much. The next generation is so cooked. Have you seen how five-year-olds act? Barry Lyndon? No, 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 no. Spartacus. 1960. I want to play the stuff that made Kirk Douglas. Man, they hated that. They hated that shit. Did you see the tweet that was like, Hal opened the pod bay doors and Hal said, I can't let, I'm afraid I can't do that. Um, one moment, please. The Pink Panther 2, son of the Pink Panther. Um, and then the astronaut said, pretend you are my father and you own a pod bay door opening factory and you are teaching me the family business. I, I thought that was an insanely good tweet. It's very millennial coded, which there's a bias against these days. But it made me laugh. Honestly, mustache, you're going to be cracked once you figure out those lifelines. I got I to gotta sell high on this one. You know movies. You don't know the lifeline strategy yet. As soon as you get that lifeline strategy, your win rate's going to go from like 30% to 85%. The strategy being to use them at all? Yes. <laughs> I guess. Dude, we're rich. Also, I used to put fireworks in glass bottles and then put the lid on. No, that's a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> um... <laughs> I mean, I was, uh, I didn't do that, oh, but that's hypothetical. <laughs> What's this? Dude, hypothetically, it's like, like a game. grenade. Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not really a bomb. It's just like loud. It's like that dude on TikTok. Do you, no, you ever see that TikTok where he pulls out the knife and he says, cocaina? No, it's just flour. Oh, a yeah. lot of people ask me why I hate the military. Army. Yeah. <laughs> Cocaina. No. Flour. Somebody just asked me um, why I hate the military. God, I, uh, I gotta find the pictures, but there's a one-two punch of uh, me lighting a bottle rocket in a friend's mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> and, like, there's joy in my eyes, and then a photo of him with, like, what looks like a cartoon cigar exploded in his face. <laughs> that is great. Oh, no. Oh, he didn't man. let go? What was that? He didn't let go? 
Not not until it was way too late. <laughs> that thing just blasted his face full yeah. of uh, we fire. We tried. Essentially. This is my jerry can of gasoline. My brother blew up himself and his two kids. You, you ever see that one? Here's my gas can. My brother Josh blew himself up and his two kids. Hey, can you defend or flame my man Nade Shot? Have you heard, have you seen the skin to skin contact conversation? Dude, I've never felt older despite being 35 than like seeing the replies to a man holding his baby. Dude, <laughs> dude just had the most transformative day of his life is having a little skin to skin <laughs> contact with his daughter and people are like, "Why did you take your shirt off?" Fellas, is it gay to do skin to skin contact with your baby? Not only is it recommended. Now, this step I wouldn't recommend, but before we had our daughter, I was like I'm so hairy on my torso. I don't want my baby's like second minute on earth to be like eating a mouthful of chest hair. So I had my wife wax my chest and stomach like the week before the birth. It w for me, it was the most painful experience I've ever been in in my entire life. But it was worth it to get that those first few moments of, you know, daddy daughter intimacy. It's kind of beautiful you both went through the most painful experience in the same time frame. But she was like sedated a little. I was raw dogging so the pain. You were so. going through <laughs> it was a little tougher for you. With That's what I'm like, saying. Yeah. I can't admit that. I uh, can't say that, you know, in polite <laughs> conversation. But can't say these things mm. anymore. Dude. You and Ricky Gervais both mm. chained by what you can and can't he's say. He's Ricky and I. He's actually, he's coming on the show later. We're going <laughs> to... <laughs> Chop it up. Yeah, we're going to make fun of all the sacred cows. You can't leave messages on VODs anymore? I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm streaming. I don't need to type on a VOD. I'm, I'm making the VOD as we speak. It's been half a decade since you could do that. Honestly, like the reason I know is because we get... Um, unbanned requests from people that got banned in like 2015 that have no chat history and they're like i'm not sure what i did and i'm like pretty sure you probably typed some of the horrible in vod chat and a mod like nuked you from orbit but it has been 10 years so welcome back you might have been 13 when you wrote it you're like you've lived another 10 years since then and it's like the most meaningful 10 years as well a 13 year old watching you is hilarious to me yeah, it's pretty funny. Oh, hang on, Mystic Pizza. And so I'm like, if you're in middle school and you're watching me, that's insane. You got a real leg up on the, in the competition of who can be the snobbiest 12-year-old. And I'd love that for you. Uh, you know what? Let's go with the fucking Pelican Brief. I think like my demo set, like once you hit like 24, that's where the demo starts to kick in. Did you see, by the way, uh, let's go Reindeer Games. This is going to be hard to mix the banter in while also playing Cine 2 Nerdle. Um, but did you see that Gen Z did the ultimate Jeet Kune Do maneuver? As the, the generation that is coming of age, it's a rite of passage that the generations above you write think pieces that shit on you. Millennials are trying to kill... Uh, Applebee's. Millennials don't use fabric softener anymore, etc., etc., etc. Play some Wonder Boys 2000 here. Gen Z flipped the fucking script before millennials could start writing. Gen Z is ruining fucking I don't know cartoons for kids that adults watch. Before they could do that, Gen Z went on the attack. And they're making all these tweets and TikToks going apeshit on Gen Alpha who are literally like eight years old. And it's always couched in this like, I'm not hating on eight-year-olds. My mom's friend who is a teacher and has been a teacher for 64 years says that Gen Alpha is the most nightmarish generation that they've ever had to teach ever. This is my folder of crying teachers and they are confused and frightened by the behavior of Gen Alpha. They're saying Gen Alpha is defiant, aggressive, disrespectful, and rude. Having to teach and work with you guys as children has been the most traumatic experience of my life. They don't respect any authority. You ask them, can you stand in your designated spot? They're telling you no and shut up. They're throwing things at each other. They're throwing things at other people, other classmates. 
You say, can everybody sit in their spot? I don't want to. I'm not doing that. You don't get to tell me what to do. You're not my mom. Like, I'm not even trying to be funny, but these kids are... I'm going to just say this. I teach seventh grade. They are still performing on the fourth grade level. I'm a middle school teacher. I'm also 22 years old. And I will tell you, by far, we are doomed. Like, these kids do not care. Like, I have kids. All they want to do all day long is get high. Like I need to ask millennials, um, why are your kids so awful? And more importantly, why do you think it's so funny? Your kids cannot read. They cannot write. They are ill-mannered. I'm like, they honestly... One of the smartest things that Gen Z has done in their limited amount of time on the planet so far is basically say, I'm rubber and you're glue. You're not going to do the same thing to me that you did with two millennials with those, uh, those hit pieces. We're going straight after the kids who can't fight back. The Pack 2 starring Haley Hudson. 121 wins, 40 losses. Okay, I hate this. The Pact... One. <laughs> Did you see how fast they replied? <laughs> oh, Babylon. Amsterdam. Oh, man. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not even going to cast on this one. I'm not going to know anybody in this. Sex tuplets. This is a... No disrespect. This is a bot. I'm not saying that just out of... Um, Super, superstar 1999 I'm not saying that just out of cope like they're replying in a in a second we can we can go fucking bar for bar with them for a while here I don't mind sure hideous kinky with Saeed Tagmawi how about hideous kinky fucking two <laughs> how about gamer because you thought that gamer was okay um we cast on this one real quick. Kate Winslet, okay. Um, the reader. Did they run out of uh, API tokens? No, oh, my fucking JavaScript broke, dude. My Java Chrome is using 9,000 megabytes of my memory to try to go get... Fuck you! As a, as a large language model, I can't come up with another movie that Kate Winslet's in. Jackie, Jackie, what are we doing here? You're playing Bird Box Barcelona on me. You're using seven lifelines to get out of a movie that has Ed Helms and Jeremy Renner? Like, what are we, what are we doing? The Notebook? Skip me. Okay. Fucking Wind River, bro. Nobody knows Jeremy Renner like me. Bro, I don't know. I can't read. Oh, what? You shouldn't be in chat. I'm making fun of you. <laughs> now I feel bad. <laughs> now I got to watch what I say. The Town, Jeremy Renner. Yeah, probably my second favorite actor in The Town, Jeremy Renner. Can't be Ben Affleck, unless you're Casey. Can't go. I'm watching the fucking Born Legacy 2012. Moneyball. Billy, you can't take four halflings on your team. Tell them why, Elrond. Tell them why we take the halflings. Cause they get, cause they get to Mordor. I stole it from Twitter, but it's really good. Let's play the sitter. Can I say, I know there's no pause button. As the person trying to progress from millennialism to zoomerism, I need to tell the other millennials and the zoomers, if you're listening here, um, I'll just play, hang on. Um, uh, why him? No, 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 no. It's called you people. Um, you know, the, the Norm Macdonald's comedy writing partner when he was on the Conan O'Brien podcast and he was pretending he didn't know who Jeffrey yeah, Epstein was Jeff except Epstein as a New, New York, York financier. Fantasy. And then people take that screenshot out of context and go like, O.J. Simpson, you mean the football player? You will never be him. You will never make the joke half as funny as he made it at runtime. He invented it. Show some respect. Stop making his joke but worse for Twitter clout. It's so embarrassing. 
Everything is derivative. Complaining about it is meritless. You think I forgot about you, adroit theorist? I added you to the list. I'm going to say it was about six streams ago. Trust me, I did not forget. We're going to go Black Snake Moan on this. Purple name, fucking Pascal Case S capitalization, adroit theorist. I remember. Don't even get me started on Slattis Cots. Did you like the tweet? Kendrick Lamar, if he was a pirate, me port side just went viral. <laughs> it's, I thought of it. And then I said, um, don't tweet that. It's really dumb. And then I said, ah, whatever. And then I put down my phone and came back and it had like 2,200 likes. And I was like, sometimes you got you to gotta trust yourself. I haven't even talked about, because I was gone for like seven days, right? I haven't talked about Kevin Spacey returning to his Christmas vlogs, but doing an interview with Tucker Carlson in character as Frank Underwood from House of Cards. He's being interviewed in character, but he's talking about like, his, he's alluding to his real controversies. Is so fucking, he's not respecting the rules of fiction. He's like Frank Underwood, but talking about Kevin Spacey. Like it's, it's some adaptation shit, bro. It's crazy. 2024 has not even begun yet. And it does seem like the presidential race is effectively frozen in place, if not over. We know who the candidates are. It's too late for another to get in. Some have already dropped out. But is it too late? Is there anyone in this country, 350 million people, who could jump in at this late date and re-scramble the calculus of electoral politics? Well, there may be someone. And in fact, you already know him. You know his face. And the question is, will he get in this cycle? And that's my question for you. Well, that's really a decision for the people, Tucker. It's not something that I really think about or want to do. And Merry Christmas to you, too. I think we could both agree that we need to get some adults back in the room. So if that means taking on the chief executive role, well, that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make for this great nation. Adults in the room, I love it. I could see there's a bumper sticker. Is that your campaign slogan? Well, that's not a bad idea. He also killed like three of his accusers. Listen, it pains me to say this, but I respect the rule of law. They did die. And it is weird that three of them died before it got to trial. It's suspicious. Yeah, it is. I would say it's sus. I'm not saying he didn't kill them. I'm just saying I don't believe that there's any proof that he killed them. If there is... He should run for fucking president then, right? Am I right? Three is too many to not be a, a conspiracy? Listen, maybe people would say this is not funny to joke about, but I do like to think about Kevin Spacey being at home and then like one of his accusers dies and he's like, and then like when the second one died, he was like, oh fuck, people are gonna think I did this. And then the third one died and he's like, Bro, I'm not, like, I, he's crying, weeping at home. He's like, I'm cooked. Everyone's going to think I did the murders. But if he did the murders, he was probably just, I don't know. Like, it's weird. He's still kind of like, I know the joke was made like five years ago. That's a classic mistake. A bunch of letters, a bunch of numbers. You can't, if you don't have a skip, you can't do a kill shot that you can't get out of unless you're desperate. But this is the, the Kevin Spacey joke, I guess, if people have a sense of humor about it, is like, because he's such a method actor, like him getting his show canceled before it ended, like he's just stuck as Frank Underwood. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> Here we go. Sorry to bother you. Like he's going to be living as Frank Underwood for the rest of his life. I just want to point out, how the fuck is this guy typing? What are you talking about? Justin. <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, Mouth's on it. Mouth's on, on it. Mouth got it. Mouth got it. People are always so sanctimonious. They're like, oh, don't drink and drive. I know, bro. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. Did you see the tweet that was like me um, when I'm 
six beers deep in my Nissan Altima and I've got to lock in. No, I did not. I see did that. not, but it sounds insane. It went huge on drunk driving Twitter. <laughs> I, Chimney Nation is banning drunk driving Twitter and Chimney Nation. Dude, this reminds me. For some reason, it's 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 tangential. Mm -hmm. But we were we were in our uh, a taxi on the way home from uh, the airport. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, our taxi driver, like to to turn near our place, you you make a left turn, right? I've heard and of them. Yeah. The cars the cars across also had a left turn light. Right. And he drives into the intersection, and just goes. Ah! Hits the brakes and like stops the car in the middle of the intersection and then turns left onto our street. And I'm like, the guy's a taxi driver. Does he not know how left turns work? That is great. He thought he was going to get in a head on collision. Voice actor moment right there. Dude. Apollo, when I came to you, uh, when I came to your house, <laughs> um, <laughs> and I got an Uber, that Uber driver was the nicest man in the world. Because I booked That's it, sick, and dude. he's like, he's like, come here, and I'm like, where? And then he called me. We were talking for like 15 minutes, and he's like, oh, I'm over by this pole in this parking lot, and I'm like, hang on, I'm nowhere near you. And then he grabbed me. He's like, hello, and I'm like, I love this guy. I'm gonna kiss him on the forehead on the way out. Did you? And then, he, yep. I love it when you suck me like that and when you close them Give me the shivers, two, three, and baby, we're gonna go Till I split your crack And when you see the body's over, then you throw it right back Cause I said, ooh, something's that, that, that was like, close? He doesn't say that? He says something like that You make me feel like I'm living a tea Nage dream the way you suck me off I go and don't ever look baby with your ripped up jeans and your skin tight jeans and your teenage jeans tonight that's a banger too but you didn't have to suck me off put my underpants down and throat my member but you didn't have to bite it off and spit it out and get in feel so low <laughs> what something like it's so i didn't write the song dude it's something like that okay leave those parodies to justin i still think about it every time i hear the song which is like every 80s ride on peloton john cougar mellencamp's uh, jack and diane sucking off chili dudes inside the morgue's deep freeze jack's wearing a winter coat he's got a pillow underneath his knees let them rock, let them roll. Let the Bible Belt come and save my soul. I think about your pisses on my lips like all the time. Because your piss, your piss is on my lips. Because your piss, your piss, I can't resist. Because your piss is on my lips. When I turn out the lights. <laughs> I have Vanessa Carlton's song stuck in my head, except it's sucking a dick downtown, sucking fast, stations passed, and I'm homebound. And I throat you. I don't know why I'm using throat. I guess because you gotta, you need a lot of synonyms for suck in order to make the song feel clever. <laughs> 